we've got a, a maritime offshore skills group which started in 2015 and that's uh, de developing, uh, building relationships with national organisations, local organisations, getting feedback from companies about what their skills demands are. So today's event really was uh, how do we move that on a step? What, what are the future skills demands? Uh, what, are the, what's, what is expected in the next five or ten years? So uh, it was an opportunity for uh, companies in the industry and training providers and the stakeholders to uh, to learn a little bit more about that and have some input into it. The maritime sector isn't as large as it used to be 30, 40 years ago. Therefore, fewer people can use their contacts with family and friends and neighbours to find out about what's going on. Therefore, we now need to be working in a more structured way um, to help people identify what's available uh, and what the opportunities might be. Five years ago, uh, there wasn't really no maritime training facilities, there was no offshore wind training facilities, yeah, and now we've got some of the best in the country. I suppose it's a, a combination of looking at what we're doing um, with respect to maritime skills and how we actually use that then to feed the pipeline of talent into the actual ports and logistics industry. So i um, not really spoken to those colleagues in the last year, so for me it's, uh, it's worth today just finding out how things have advanced and you know, possible connections uh, to solve our problems as well as you know, helping them out as well. What are you know, the skills that we used to have? Um, and uh, in many ways, uh, a city like Hall of Grimsby, people turn their back on um, the sea uh, as, a, as a future career. But now, of course, with uh, the ports uh, uh, investments increasing dramatically, opportunity in offshore energy, then all of a sudden, you know, there's a demand. There's more vessels uh, um, operating on the Humber. It is the busiest port in the UK and fourth busiest in Europe. So a lot of organisations are doing good work. Uh, to try and get people into the sector. Uh, we heard earlier from Nathan Goodman from Hull Trinity House Academy uh, that the schools um, are working, to, his school in particular, is trying to work to get a, a, a maritime qualification, make it available. Others are doing the same. Rapidly expanding offshore wind investments, you know, which is going into the, the billions and billions. The, 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 our estimate uh, just on the ones in the North Sea are around about the 30 billion euro mark. So they need to be constructed, maintained, uh, and we'll do that from our, our part of the world. You get young people in an area like this who, th who are they're conscious that they would, they're in a, an area close to the sea, but they don't know how to find out about the opportunities, and they don't know which bit might interest them. The technology is moving so fast, there are jobs that will exist in the future that don't exist now, and so when you go to primary school, that those children yeah. will be learning things that, that that we learn in adults but naturally are, are part of their daily lives and I think in the future that will just get more and more as technology pervades more into what we do as a, in our daily working lives. So, so they might say, I know there, was, there are um, jobs at sea, um, the ferries uh, across the North Sea for example, they look like appealing jobs but you know, what's it really like, how long do I have to spend on board? all those things. There's all the jobs in the wind farms, uh, offshore energy, lots of opportunities, lots of opportunities ashore. We support in the supply chain about 39,000 jobs, but directly we have about 1,100 people that we're employing today and we're growing as well. So um, we're, you know, we're re recruiting people in commercial, port operative roles, which, you know, it's such a diverse range of, of opportunities. Um, and we also have a reliance on um, what we call the transient third party labour but what we're trying to do there is probably take more of those people in-house into permanent roles to be part of our company, part of the, the culture and the strategy um, you know, where we're heading. We're um, a, a small training company that provides uh, essentially training using simulators around behaviour and competency so our, what our role is is to help um, people develop those skills and using simulators does that in a, in a professional way. So that our ship simulator, for example, is exactly the same controls that you'd get on a vessel that's out in the North Sea, or, or, and our truck simulator is exactly the same as a, a truck that's driving past you know, these, this office every single day. If you think hull, port, and um, you know, you've got P&O on there, we've got one of the biggest container operations that's grown from seven calls a week in 2016 to 14 calls per week. So we've got to get the right people that are absolutely committed and have a passion to work in the uh, ports and logistics industry. 
and it's and it's a grown industry as well. And we are launching in September this year the Humber Maritime College, and that will be a Merchant Navy Cadet College. It will train officers initially, starting with engineering officers, and then following year with navigation officers, um, and then we look to the international um, students as well. Time. So rather than teaching them out of a textbook, we can put them in a simulator, and they can understand engineering systems or you know um, emergency procedures or whatever using the simulators. Um, to complement the teaching. You know, if you're on a quay side and it's, um, you know, based from the east last year, you know, when that snow came down, you've got high winds. We do not stop. We cannot stop. Amazon doesn't stop. So, you know, the power is still needed and, and we need to transport that. I've had a little look myself today, even though, you know, I'm part of that skills group, we've got, we've got our companies involved in this industry, but it's not until you bring people together, exchange information, latest updates, um, that you kind of uh, get a, a picture of, of you know, where we've come from. And we heard examples from ABP earlier about much, much higher uh, rates of pay for apprentices. Unsurprisingly, you get paid a bit less in year one than you do in year four, depending on the nature of apprenticeship you're doing. And because in year one, you're essentially a cost. Year four, you're, they're earning money through you. But uh, yes, there's good salaries available and good opportunities. I think particularly, one of the things I like about the maritime sector is there's good opportunities for people who've got some raw talent, people who've got the practical ability to do something, get a boat or a ship from here to there without bumping into anything. Um, that's very different from an academic ability to write an essay about it, and that appeals to lots of people. Thank uh you. -huh.